It's a new year, brand spanking new year. We have so many hopes and so many dreams pinned on this one. But you shouldn't be lazy. You should challenge yourself. And here is why. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. We are talking challenges. Challenges. Now, in 2020 and in 2019, we ran the GM challenge and the player challenge for that matter. And it certainly seemed popular. So, what are we talking about? Well, when we designed the challenge, we said, well, why should you have a challenge in the first place? What What is it that a challenge gives you? What bring? What does it does it offer you in terms of you as a person rather than, uh, you know, uh, you as an, a vegetable? And so a challenge oftentimes helps to destroy writer's block. Now, how does it do that? Well, if you set yourself a goal, if you set yourself a challenge and you say, right, I want to do X or I want to do Y, then it gives you something to aim for. If you don't have anything to aim for, if you don't have any goals, you don't have any any aspirations, you're not challenging yourself, then that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get anything. Well, you are going to get nothing. Wow, that's complicated. In other words, if you don't have a goal, if your goal is, if, you, if, if, if there's nothing to achieve, then that is what you will achieve, nothing. However, if you do have a goal, even if you don't get there, but you have tried, you have done far more than someone who has not. Now, I wish I was a great and wise philosopher, because then I could put that into a few simple words and, you know, everyone would go, ooh, and ah, and it would become one of those horrid uh, pictures that hangs on the wall saying, you know, try or, or fail, you always learn, whatever. I have... Nonetheless, it destroys writer's block because it forces you to go down a path which you might not necessarily have gone down before. So in our challenges, for example, there are a few things that you needed to do in 2020 in order to complete the challenge. Now, I'm happy to say that there were a lot of folk who completed or at least competed in the challenge. Not all of them made all of the targets that were set in that challenge, but every single one of them had a great time whilst doing it and learned something in the process. So so that that's definitely one of those. The second one is it broadens your horizons. It really says to you, you know what? You did not plan on creating a race this year. You're not one of those home brewers. But because the challenge for 2020, one of the steps was to create your own race, what that did was it meant you, if you were participating, going, well, let me try. Let me see what goes into making your own custom race for whatever role-playing system you're using. So it helps you to look in spaces and in places that you wouldn't normally look if you're not going after a challenge. And then finally, the other thing that I think that challenges do is that they empower your imagination. Mother is the necessity of all invention, as far as they say. No, wait. In oh, my. This is a terrible... Hmm... Listen not to what I say this day, for wisdom found here will never be. Uh, necessity is the mother of all invention. That is the actual phrase. Good grief. So what that means is, is if you are required to do something, if you are required to come up with a race, not only do you have to explore a different part of the rule set that you might not have explored before, but now you have to start thinking and being imaginative in a different space as well. And that's very important. And that's critical to realize is that this is this is that space that you're going to go into is it's a space that's going to make you think and think outside the box. All of these things, as far as I'm concerned, are super empowering and things that you should be trying to do on a weekly basis, let alone on a yearly basis. So I want to just take a little bit of time during this video to reflect on exactly what some of the answers were to the 2020 challenge. Now, there were so many people competing that I can't read out the names. or well, not competing, completing the challenge, I should say. There were so many people that I went through it and I just compiled some, some numbers. I got you some data on what the responses were like, okay? So you can have a look at that. Now, we had 32 new campaigns starting from the folk that started this, that, that completed the challenge for 2020. 32 new campaigns. That's amazing. That's fantastic. That means 32 new campaigns with an average of four players per campaign plus a GM, that's five. That's about 150 people who had a really great time this year, or at least hopefully had a great time. 70 
uh, let me get this right, 70 and three sixths of uh, new players were were joined, started playing. So 70 players and then three sixths of a player uh, were introduced to role playing this year through this challenge. 70 people suddenly discovered this fantastic hobby that we all love. And I can't think of any greater way of sharing our hobby than to get people involved. Someone wrote that the people they got involved only counted as a sixth each because they were all murder hobos. So that's why it's the three sixths comes in there. Now, listen to this list, and I have to read it because it's it's just long. These were some of the new systems that were tried. So th most of the uh, uh, contestants or co completionists, I should say, most of the people who submitted for the competition, most of the people who submitted for the challenge, it's not a competition. There's nothing to win. Um, none, mm, you get my point. Most of the people who submitted, they had been playing Dungeons & Dragons, a sort of a standard kind of role-playing game. The challenge for 2020 was to play a new role-playing game that they had not played before. And so we got this list. Now, there are some games on this list I've never even heard of, but you can bet your bottom dollar I'm going to be adding them to my list to go and explore and see what these are all about. So we had Emberwind, Does the Captain Have Another Project, Blades in the Dark, Cats and Humans, Star Trek Adventures, Tales of Equestria, Savage Worlds, Someone created their own RP system. Fantastic. Fate, Starfinder, Pathfinder, Lancer, Ten Candles, Don't Rest Your Head, Iron Sword, Deadlands, Virus, uh, Vampire, The Masquerade. So that's quite a different range of games from the usual ones that you would expect. Pathfinder 1, by the way, not Pathfinder 2. So I like that. I, th don't rest your head. I've never heard of that before. I want to go and explore that. Uh, does the captain have another project? I know that that's the English translation because I think the original is in German. Um, but yes, cats and humans? That sounds awesome. I need to go and find these games and I need to go and play in them because they, they <laughs> yeah. All right, so... We are being expanded by looking at what other people have been doing or expanded as uh, we discovered last week. New worlds. I'm going to read out the name of these new worlds that were created because they're really cool. Now, the challenge, by the way, for 2021 is coming up at the end of this video. And yes, I'm being a bastard. I'm making you watch the whole video or just skip to the part where I start doing the thing. But you get the point. I mean, I'm, I'm celebrating. This is New Year, folks. This is this video, by the way, is recorded and released on. Well, it's recorded earlier, but it's released on the 1st of January. So so that's why I'm excited. It's new. It's great. It's brilliant. So these were the new worlds that were created. And if your world is read out, please forgive me from pronunciation. Imperia, Asylum, Anhiri, Glassman City, Grim Hollow, um, that was updated and corrected. The original Grim Hollow uh, world map was updated and corrected by a user. Uh, another user had a poorly made new world that they created, but they made it nonetheless much better than someone who did not make a new world. Lufain, Shattered Worlds, Stelvis Hold, Athernia, Dragon Gem, and then Smooshed Earth, which they said they brought the Earth and smooshed it around, and that was their new world. These were the new playable races that were created, and this is just some of them, because some people created like 5 or 10 or 15 races, and some people didn't tell me the names of the races that they created. But there's an interesting little thing that's coming out of here. So look at this. Canistars, wolf folk, Contrivances, artificial aliens, raccoon folk, Salora, which is fungus people, beastkin, dryadkin, elflings, which are sort of weird elves, rock elves, what are those? Those sound exciting. Diumit, Diumit, cat or fox folk, pipe fox, metamorphic shapeshifters, the femir, which are lizard folk, smolderlings, and then the nihir, which is an arctic creature-like thing. I find it very interesting, at least certainly from those that submitted, that we're getting a lot of anthropomorphic uh, creatures coming through there, w uh, wolf folk, pipe foxes, foxes and cats, um, the lizard folk. I think that's really cool. And what that means is, is that we're looking for new ways of creating living worlds. Fantastic. I want to add all of these to my game. I really do, because they all have so much potential to them. And then finally, the challenge was to get a new set of dice. Now, I know this is a contentious issue, and it's not because on the channel we promote dice that you can go and buy. Um, I have to admit that is that is a benefit for us, 
But having more dice, it's a hobby. It's a collection. I collect dice. I have dice made out of reindeer bone. I have dice made out of stone that comes from the middle of Africa. I have um, dice that come from Kyoto in Tokyo. Well, in Japan, not in Tokyo. Uh, in Japan. I, I like to collect these these weird and wonderful things. I mean, they're just so cool. Anyway, this is the list of dice that were collected over the year by the uh, submissions. Metal dice. A big dice. Oh, God, I love a big dice. Yeah, I like a big dice. A yen coin for being a D2. Endless dice. Thank you. They were one of our sponsors. Digital dice. Red, blue, yellow with glitter dice. Someone lost a D8. There was our moment of silence. RPG bot was installed on some Discord servers so that they had virtual dice. A random assortment of dice. Dice for achieving level 5. They purchased dice for achieving level 5. Star swirling dice. Dice for or from a significant other. Nothing says I love you quite like giving them a set of dice that will betray them at every turn. <sighs> Which reminds me, I need to buy a set of dice. Uh, Color-coded dice. Pretty colors dice. Donated dice. Nothing better than donating some of your old dice to a new player. Let them get a feel for it, and then, of course, you get them to buy their own. Tiny dice. I've had tiny dice before. I think they're in a jar somewhere behind me on the shelves. Kanji dice. Literally dice with the numbers written in kanji. That would have helped me when I was in Japan. Green dice. And then a jade d20. That's pretty awesome. I think the most spectacular dice I got this year was the silver, solid silver dice for a Kickstarter campaign that uh, sadly didn't um, succeed, but the silver dice are absolutely amazing. All right, so big up to all of you who competed in the challenge, and the way that they competed, by the way, is that they joined our Discord server, and that's discord.gg forward slash great GM. And there's a channel there called Challenge, and it will be now updated to Challenge 2021. And so that leads me quite neatly into Challenge 2021. You are going to identify an element or an aspect of your role playing as a GM or as a player. So we're opening it up as a GM or as a player. You're going to identify an aspect of your role playing that you feel you are particularly weak on. And you're going to work on it. That's your challenge. So if you think you tend to railroad, you got to work on that. Figure out how to be more sandboxy. I've got videos on how to do that. If you are a player and you tend to draw your sword and kill things before asking questions, you've got to work on that. These are just examples. They're not specifics. I'm not throwing shade on any one particular type of person here. You find out what is weakest for you. And if you don't know, it's a great opportunity to just jump onto your social media and ask your role-playing group, hey guys, I really want to work on my role-playing this year. What do you think are my weakest points? And then you must list them and let them come back to you. Don't wait for them to try and give you the answer because they're not going to. They're going to be too timid. If they give you a whole page worth of things to work on, that's fine. Don't lose heart. Don't stop role playing. Choose one of those things on that list and then work on it. Maybe you hurry through scenes. I know I do that. I've got into this habit where because I've been playing games online primarily for an audience and my games are usually an hour and a half long, I race through scenes now because I just want to get, I, I've got so little time, I have to get through stuff. And so when I'm playing games that don't have a timeline, that don't have a, a, a time frame, I'm still racing because that's what I've got used to. So I have to step back and go, whoa, we are going to slow down. We're going to slow down. <clears throat> Maybe you have plots that are too complicated and your players never figure them out because they're like, wait, so the Archduke assassinated his himself to implicate the queen <clears throat> so that the queen... Uh, would then get removed and the Archduke's daughter would then be able to marry the king. Uh, but the queen actually murdered the Archduke first. Wait, maybe that's something to work on. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to work on this stuff. You're going to challenge yourself. Look at what you're doing and figure out how you're going to avoid that. Now, in the next couple months on this channel, we're going to be focusing on being better. I mean, that's what the whole channel's always been about. We're going to be looking at specific things, very specific things. So if you have 
a challenge in terms of, well, this is what I do as a GM. I don't know how to fix it. Because that is an honest answer, by the way. Leave it in the comments down below and I will add it to the list of videos that I am doing because that's what we're all about. It's about improving ourselves. And it gets to a point where you can look and know all the rules that will never make you a great GM because you can't hold pace or because you railroad and it'll never make you a great player. Yes, you've got the perfect build character, but the the, the character is absolutely boring. Um, so it's all about making 2021 about upping your game, but in a very dedicated, very focused kind of way. So I want you to join me on this journey. So what is my biggest thing for 2021? What do I have to work on? To be perfectly frank, I am going to be working on my notes. I am going to be working on my notes. That is my, that is my least favorite thing to do. It's a very, very laborious thing to do. So I am going to be working on my note taking. I really want to make sure that I'm doing more in terms of that. So that is what I will be working on for the beginning of the year. I have a few other things that I want to work on, but I have the luxury of, of actually running a channel that requires me to do lots of role playing. So I have the opportunity to explore more options, but that is my goal. I want to take more notes and I want to take notes better. Now I have obviously been working with World Anvil for many years in terms of um, keeping track of your world and all that sort of thing. But in terms of taking notes in game, I think I've found something which is going to make quite a big difference. I'm going to talk about that in another video later on in the year. Anyway, I wish all of you the most fantastic of 2021s moving forward. I really, really hope that this year is the year that we can put 2020 behind us and come together and really solve this, this, this global problem. And, um, Get back to playing games, damn it. There is no sponsor for today because it's a new year and why not? And our biggest sponsors, our biggest supporters are our fabulous Patreons. So I cannot, cannot thank you enough for the amount of love and effort and support that you give this channel. I really cannot. The Kickstarter has been doing phenomenally well. The Epic Campaigns, um, Epic Battle Maps um, Kickstarter has been doing so well. Uh, again, because of your support, it finishes on the 15th of January. If you haven't got in yet on that, um, go and have a look. Link is down below. But yes, a big thank you to our Patreons and to you for watching all the way to the end of this video. And I hope that you take up the challenge and that you join me in improving your game. Until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming.